Okay, so hello everybody and welcome back to another video. And this is part two for what if Naruto had the Rinnegan. And I really do hope you enjoy the video. Please do like and subscribe and share this with all your friends. Subscribe from their second app account, whatever. And I don't want to waste your time. Let's get into the video. So the last time we left off, Team 7 was getting ready for the bell test. And Naruto, having eaten even though Kakashi told him not to eat, uh, including Sasuke and Sakura, who actually didn't eat, which they didn't know was a bad thing, <laughs> um, were all heading to the training grounds to meet Kakashi. Little did they know Kakashi wouldn't be there for a long time. They ended up waiting for like an hour for Kakashi to arrive until he popped out of nowhere and said, oh, I got lost on the path of life, or did he use another excuse that time? Doesn't matter. He just said something like that. But Team 7 wasn't buying it and just told Kakashi to go on with whatever this entire test thing was. And Kakashi explained the rules of the bell test, saying that this was um, something called the bell test. And basically, they would have to get the two bells from Kakashi. The person who didn't get the bell would be failed and go back to the academy. Now Sakura, being very unhappy with this, was like, no, that's unfair, we worked hard to get to here. But Kakashi was just like, oh well, you gotta reprove your worth by taking this bell from me. And Sakura just was like, oh, fine. And Sasuke was like, yeah, I bet I can do it. Like. If this, we're supposed to pass this after all. He's not purposefully trying to fail us all, so it can't be too hard. Sorry guys, I'm back now. I just had to do something really quick. Um, so yeah, they just thought, I mean, we're af after all, we're supposed to pass this. So there must be some way we can pass, can't be that hard. And so Kakashi just says, start as all of them run into the forest. Now, Kakashi just sits down and starts reading his book. Now, seeing this, Naruto just runs out of the bushes and starts attacking at Kakashi, being enraged by the fact that Kakashi would literally go to this extent. Just like, like, okay, you have to get this from me. This is a big deal. And then just start sitting, just sit down and start reading. Uh, so Naruto was pretty angry and he started rushing at Kakashi full speed and tried punching him. But Kakashi was gone. And um, Naruto had no idea where Kakashi was. But then he saw Kakashi behind him. As Kakashi said, secret technique, a thousand years of death. And Naruto just went flying. And Naruto went at Kakashi again after landing, but then he tripped on something. As he felt something tighten around his ankle as he was pulled up into a tree, realizing that now he was stuck in a trap dangling from a tree held by a rope. And Naruto was mad, to say the least. And he said, let me out now. And Kakashi said, nope, no can do. As Naruto uh, used his one free hand to pull out a kunai and threw it at Kakashi. But Kakashi dodged it easily. And while Naruto was uh, throwing the kunai, Sasuke found it as the perfect opportunity where, where Kakashi was distracted to run in and take the bells. But unfortunately for Sasuke, he was very wrong and had miscalculated Kakashi's strength because the instant he ran in, Kakashi just punched him in the gut, sending him um, flying. And like Sakura, seeing both Sasuke and Naruto fighting, just decided that to show herself. But since she wasn't very confident, she just walked out and stood there and pulled out a kunai. Now, Kakashi was like, okay, you gonna do something? And uh, Sakura just stood there saying nothing. As Sasuke, meanwhile, got back up saying, okay, 
this time I'll get them, and rushed at Kakashi again. But Kakashi is a Jonin after all. So, you know, um, he's not, he's not gonna be, he's not that dumb. And he just, uh, Naruto, I mean, Sasuke and Kakashi get into a heated taijutsu bash. So, just like in the original where they started fighting, but eventually Kakashi would come out on top. And right when he was about to hit the finishing, like, blow to knock Sasuke out, he felt an incredibly powerful punch hit him in the side of his chest. And by the time he looked, it was too late. But he saw him, Naruto, standing there as his eyes were purple with black rings. Now, Kakashi didn't quite understand this, but he felt Naruto was different. He had a different aura around him. He had so much more chakra and strength. And Kakashi tried running in again, uh, you know, just to quickly... Uh, get rid of Naruto, but Naruto used the Prada, uh, I mean the Osura path to send some missiles at him, and Kakashi sent a fireball in return, but Naruto had the Prada path and used that to absorb all the entire fireball. Now, Kakashi was stunned. Not only had Naruto breaking loose, got an incredible punch on him, and sent missiles at him from nowhere. He also absorbed his jutsu, and K while Kakashi was thinking, Naruto once again switched to the um, Asura path, and this time, not only did he send a bunch of missiles, but he also sent lasers in Na Kakashi's direction, and N Kakashi was able to dodge all of them, except for one laser that got a small scratch on his left arm, and another one that got a little bit of a hit on his waist. Now, Kakashi was like, <laughs> you might be strong, but it won't be that easy to beat me. And Naruto started walking up to him as Kakashi got back into his stance. But then Naruto stopped, crouched down, picked something up from the ground, and showed it to uh, Kakashi saying, I don't need to beat you. I already passed. I got the bells. As he threw the bells to uh, Sakura and Sasuke. And then, that's when Kakashi realized it. When Naruto sent the lasers in Kakashi's direction and cut his waist, he wasn't trying to cut him in half. He was just trying to cut the rope of the bells so that they would fall off. And Kakashi had been so, uh, like, immersed in the battle that he didn't, he completely forgot the entire point of the, like, thing. Now, Naruto... Uh, just after passing the bells to everyone else, Kakashi just says, okay, you pass. And he explains the true purpose of what the bell test was for, saying how it was about teamwork. And since they kind of did teamwork, I guess they can all pass. But then he walks up to Sakura and says, you try, try helping your team a bit more next time, okay? Because you were kind of useless. And Sakura is like, useless is my middle name. Well, she didn't actually say say that, but she should have, because it's true. Um, anyways, after that, Team 7 it becomes an official team, and they start going on missions. But the missions are just too easy, for Naruto and for everyone. Catching cats and helping old ladies cross the road, and literally doing a grocery shopping for villagers. It's just not fun f or challenging at that for anyone. So next time they find Hirozen... They ask him for a harder mission. And Hirozen, knowing that Team 7 is very powerful and capable, he decides to give them a mission to escort Tazna. Now, uh, basically, uh, Tazna just comes in and he's like, Do you expect these kids to escort me? You know who I am. Basically, Tazna does his whole thing. Um... And Team 7 is like, bro, this is this is the guy we're escorting of all people. And Hirozen tells his Ombu to take him away. And sorry if there's a lot of pauses in my, um, in my talking. It's just, 
there's something going on right now, so I, I might end up cutting the video a lot or pausing a lot just to do something else and then come back. So I'm really sorry if that does happen. Just I'll try to concentrate on the story. Anyways, the next day, they all head out to the uh, front like gate areas of the village. And there they meet Tazuna, who is now all sober. And he really just apologizes for, you know, shouting at them the previous day. And they head off on their way. Now, as they were heading, you know, Naruto was like, Ugh, this is, it's hot out here. And, like, everyone was so tired because they didn't have enough water. And it was just so dry and warm outside that they were all extremely tired. And, you know, Naruto was looking around like, oh my god, is there any water anywhere, like a lake or anything? And as he was looking around... He saw something that caught his eye. He saw a puddle. And at first he was like, yes, finally, a puddle. But then, as he was about to approach it, he noticed something. A puddle. But why? If it is so warm, and it hasn't rained in so long, there's no way this puddle is real. As Naruto decides to walk on, but... He turns on his Rinnegan, and he looks back into the puddle. As when he looks back into the puddle, he sees the chakra signatures of two people standing in the ground, or inside the puddle, which is a Ganjutsu, after all. And Kakashi, seeing that Naruto just activated his Rinnegan, is like, okay, Naruto knows for sure. And the rest of Team 7 and Tazuna, seeing that Naruto's eyes just went purple again, they're like... Wait, is, is something wrong? And Naruto, all he does is lifts his arm, points it at the puddle, and shoots a missile, a huge rocket, right into it, using the Osura path. And this is a huge rocket, and the Osura path is pretty OP. So both of the Demon Brothers are exploded, and if both of them don't die, they at least lose limbs or you know something like that because literally this is a huge explosion of from like basically perfectly on target explosion from a Vinigon ability missile so there's really no way they can survive anyways like sakura and sasuke are just like whoa naruto yo that was that was that was pretty that was that was crazy like they, they don't have words for it like first of all they're like wow how did naruto know that they were there and second of all they're like naruto just killed those people but naruto and kakashi didn't really seem to care and they just kept walking on so sakura and sasuke decided to do the same now as they continued walking on they 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 just uh just kept walking and uh i guess they found water somewhere i mean or they had water with them the entire time i don't know they they got all their water all the water they need and now they're all hydrated but naruto is on guard now seeing as he just realized that enemies were attacking them so he is definitely ready for anything that might come in their way now because of this naruto just keeps his ring on active and and this does not exhaust him because uh like he's not like kakashi because his ring on is like natural he naturally has that ring on it's just kind of like a part of him you know it's a natural ring on so it's not like kakashi where using kakashi's shine gun is really exhausting for kakashi this is different like the ring on is a natural part of Naruto, so they, he doesn't really get exhausted or anything from always having the Rinnegan active. In fact, I don't know why he doesn't do it. I mean, the reason he doesn't do it is he's scared that people will judge him and all of that stuff, but if he has to, he can keep it on 24-7. Just so you know. Anyways, Naruto has it on, and immediately he notices some rustling, something moving in the bushes, as he instantly throws a kunai in the direction. And... Uh, turns and he tries to look at what it was and it's just a white rabbit 
Now, this is kind of confusing for Team 7 because they don't know what a white rabbit is doing in this area of all places, but they just decide not to question it. But then, Kakashi says duck, and Team 7, just all of them ducks, as a huge blade swings right over them and lands in the tree behind them. And on top of the blade lands Zabuza. Now Zabuza does his entire speech, was like, I'm Zabuza Momochi, the demon of the mist, and you must be Kakashi Hatake, the copy ninja. And so they, they, he does his whole thing where he does the whole talking, and Kakashi's like, yo, we're, this is like a B rank mission, and no, C rank, C rank mission. And there's this, like, A-rank villain from the bingo book hunting us down. This, you know, this, this isn't, this isn't, like, what this is supposed to be. I'm gonna question Tazna after this fight. And Kakashi just says, stay back, guys, I'll, I'll handle this, as he starts fighting uh, Zabuza. Now, the entire fight with Zabuza goes just like in canon. And, basically, it's literally just the same where, you know, Kakashi gets uh, trapped in the water bubble prison thingy after a long time of just just fighting with Zabuza. He gets trapped in the water prison. Now, after that, Naruto realizes that he has to do something. And immediately, he decides to use his Rinnegan. Seeing as to the fact that it was already active, he just rushes straight at Zabuza without any of Sasuke's help. And Zabuza seeing him is like, oh, you wanna you wanna fight me? As Naruto sends three missiles in Zabuza's direction. And Zabuza has a lot of trouble dodging these and almost can't dodge them because Naruto with the Rinnegan is I mean the Rinnegan I am I'm, I'm saying this for like the fifth time already, but the Rinnegan is really OP. So, um, Zabuza can barely dodge these without letting go of Kakashi in the water prison. But after Naruto comes in for a punch, there's really not much Zabuza can do. And now that uh, Kakashi is free, so they do the whole thing where Kakashi copies Zabuza's water dragon jutsu. And normally... Uh, Zabuza and Kakashi's water dragon jutsus clash, but now Naruto has the Predo Path, and unfortunately for Zabuza, the Predo Path can absorb all chakra attacks. So what Naruto does is he absorbs uh, Zabuza's entire water dragon, making the uh, making Kakashi's water dragon so powerful that it ends up killing Zabuza. Seeing this, Haku steps in. And goes to investigate Zabuza's body, looking at it, saying, Zabuza, he's, he's dead. And then Haku turns around, shooting a death glare at Naruto and Kakashi, saying, You killed my master, and for that, you must die. You must pay with your lives. And immediately, Haku rushes in. And Haku is one of the fastest uh, characters in the Naruto universe. But Kakashi with his Sharingan active and Naruto with his Rinnegan, they can perceive all of Haku's abilities. And this is also when Sok uh, Sakura, I mean not Sakura, Sakura can't do anything. Sasuke goes into the fight, joining in and trying to help them out. Now, this is when... Uh, just Kakashi and Naruto are fighting Haku in an, in an intense battle as Haku starts throwing Senbon at them. Now, Naruto and Kakashi are mostly able to deflect the Senbon, and so is uh, Sasuke. Sasuke starts fighting Haku just with Taijutsu, just like he does in the original in the battle with the bridge. And originally, Sasuke can keep up with Haku, but Afterwards, Haku starts speeding up and getting faster and faster, and Sasuke just can't keep up anymore. As Kakashi and Naruto rush in at Haku, trying to finish the battle. But Haku has other plans. As Haku says, Demonic ice mirrors, as a bunch of mirrors made of ice 
come up around teams, uh, not Team 7, just Kakashi and Naruto, leaving Sasuke on the outside. Now, Kakashi, seeing this, immediately um, is like, okay, so, well, I'll do a fireball. And Sasuke being outside also does a fireball. And both of them use a great fireball jutsu, both from the outside and the inside, trying to destroy Haku's ice mirrors. Now, we know from the original that if they had done this, it would have been very effective. But we also know that a fireball jutsu is not enough to destroy Haku's ice mirrors. So, it's safe to assume that, you know, this won't be uh, all it takes to finish off Haku. And although it's a lot more effective than the fireball jutsu Sasuke tried in the original, it's still just not enough. And S Haku starts throwing Senban from all directions. Now, originally, both uh, Kakashi and Naruto can just continue, just consistently dodge all of these Senban. After all, Naruto has the Rinnegan allowing him to see things in slow motion and Kakashi has experience and the three Tomoe Sharingan. And I would like to remind you that a one Tomoe uh, Sasuke, who, well, did have plot armor on his side, was able to dodge the Senban. So if one Tomoe Sasuke can, these two can do it too. But afterwards, Haku stops going easy on them. And in the original, Haku was kind of avoiding their vital areas. But now, Haku is here to literally kill all of them and as sasuke keeps trying to pressure haku from outside of the ice mirrors basically doing um like almost nothing uh he just he, he, he like haku basically doesn't have, get affected by sasuke but what's more important is what's going on inside and uh, like Kakashi and Naruto keep getting pressured and pressured and pressured and it seems like they're not going to be able to make it now this is when Haku goes full god mode and ends up hitting Kakashi in two of his actually three of his vital points almost killing Kakashi and then Kakashi gets knocked out and Haku also ends up hitting those areas he hit for uh, Zabuza to make it seem like Zabuza was dead. And after that, just Kakashi drops down to the floor, seemingly dead. And Naruto checks up on him, saying, No, Kakashi, no, come, you can't be dead. Wake up, no. And suddenly, tears start flowing down his eyes as he starts saying haku actually wait he doesn't say that because he doesn't know haku's name but you you killed kakashi sensei and and he just doesn't have any words as he screams out in pain and in suffering and then a red aura goes around him this is the qb influence and this is just like he is in the original, where this is what he used to defeat Haku. But now, he has the Rinnegan. And with this combined power of the Rinnegan and the Nine Tails Chakra, the, the Ice Mirrors completely shatter, sending Haku flying. And Haku, looking at Naruto, realizes Naruto is a completely different person now. Naruto... This isn't the kid that he just saw earlier. This is this is somebody else. There's this incredible rage, but Haku can't give up on his mission and rushes in to kill Naruto. But Naruto is too fast. As Naruto goes behind Haku with blinding speeds and punches Haku into the ground. And Haku gets back up trying to fight him, but Naruto is already on his way to do another punch as Naruto punches Haku in the face, breaking Haku's mask, revealing Haku's face. And this doesn't. 
Now, sorry because the footage cut out like twice. <laughs> but basically what I was saying is Naruto hasn't met Haku, so this doesn't really make a difference. As Naruto finishes Haku off with a missile. Now, then he has one last thing to do. As he rushes over to Kakashi's side thinking, is there anything I can do? Please just heal Kakashi, anything, any, like any way, just heal Kakashi. As this is when he unlocks the Naraka path. And using the Naraka path, he summons the King of Hell. And he looks up seeing this creature, this the King of Hell, as it heals Kakashi, bringing him back to his full state. And Kakashi opens his eyes and he's like, what happened? Where where am I? And Naruto's like, Kakashi, you're alive. I I healed you. And Kakashi basically thanks Naruto. And you know, Team Seven is happy. They celebrate. They're like, Yay, we won. Sakura is useless again. And they just head over to Tazuna's house. Now I'm going over all of this quickly because this is literally like the third time I'm recording this, and the footage being deleted. It's it's happening a lot now. I don't know why all my footage is continuously, like, being deleted all the time. This happened last time, too. But, you know, I'll try to solve it. Anyways, you know, they eat an incredible feast at Tazna's house. And after that, they just help Tazna build his bridge. And the only thing that does come up is when Gato and his men arrive at the last day. But Naruto really just takes care of them. You know, he scales all the henchmen away. And really just gives Gato to the villagers so that the villagers can do whatever they want to Gato, this man that has been making their life miserable. And with that, the bridge is still named the Great Naruto Bridge, and Team 7 heads back to the Leaf Village. And there, they tell Hiruzen about how this was probably like a B rank or A rank mission. Hiruzen apologizes and pays them appropriately. But, you know, Right before Kakashi is going to announce the tuning exams, that's probably where I'm going to have to end this video. So yeah, that was part two for what if Naruto had the Rinnegan, and see you next time. Bye!